Around the world, a killer is on the prowl. It is quiet. It does not discriminate. There is no escape from its grip. For the estimated 38.6 million people living with HIV AIDS, hope is a fleeting thought. In the kingdom of Swaziland, HIV AIDS has struck hard. The current HIV prevalence level is considered to be the highest in the world. 42% of the population is infected. If nothing is done in the next 10 years, Swaziland will lose half its population, 500,000 people. Death is a reality that dominates daily life. How did this happen? How is this allowed to continue? Fear, poverty, culture, and politics can all share part of the blame. But the real problem lies in isolation. When a Swazi becomes infected with what that culture calls a sickness, they are immediately isolated, ignored, and left alone to die. Often HIV infection is undisclosed for fear of cultural rejection, and the disease is allowed to spread. We suffer loneliness. When you are HIV, you suffer loneliness, discrimination, rejection, isolation. People, they don't, they don't want to talk here in Swaziland. Uh, people die each and every day and people don't want to talk. They don't want to talk about HIV. Swaziland is, the, is ranking the highest in the whole world with regards to the prevalence of HIV. Therefore, it is having a, a great impact in the country. If a family member is affected, then the rest of the family is affected. If one member is infected, it affects everyone because that person will tend to isolate itself from the rest of the family, from the rest of the world. Nazarene Compassionate Ministries Incorporated's well-researched and structured approach to dealing with the HIV AIDS epidemic utilizes the Swaziland Nazarene Health Institutions to deliver resources and training. Three specific organizations are used. Faith-based and community organizations are the grassroots personal approach to touching the lives of those with HIV and AIDS. NCMI works with over 200 organizations like these to eliminate the root causes of the disease. The Home Care Task Force of the Church of the Nazarene reaches out to victims of HIV AIDS. These women are crossing the boundary of ignorance, isolation, and stigmatization by utilizing palliative care to homebound persons. Tula Gatatwala is one of the women touched by the task force. A few weeks before these images were taken, she could not sit up and was days away from death. The task force arrived in time with precious ARVs and dietary supplements to save her life. In a few more weeks, she will be out of bed and have the energy she needs to be a mother to her children. Pumzili is another woman living with HIV whose life has been transformed by the task force. I think they can help anyone who is in need of their help because they, they are helpful people. Yeah, if you talk to them, just keep telling them your problems and they will encourage you about what you need. The New Hope Center is a community-based organization that touches the lives of over 40 orphaned HIV children. A man walked up to our front gate here and he said, you know, I ride on a bus three hours a day to come to work and every day I have seen this little girl under this tree. I don't know where she, who she belongs to or what, but nobody's taking care of her. Could you help her? So we arranged and Caroline, who comes from Scotland, um, she went out with the man and they drove to the to the site where the child was and they sure enough they found this little kid under the tree she appeared to be two years old because of her teeth but body wise she was like a five month old she had distorted hips because she'd been left sitting she didn't know how to crawl she didn't know how to suck she didn't know how to eat um, her when we x-rayed her she had handfuls of dirt so that's what she'd been doing just sitting on the ground taking a handful putting it in her mouth trying to survive and the community knew her they knew that she had um, been, uh, that she had been, belonged to this family and that one had died, that one had died and then finally a community person had taken it and then they couldn't take care of her so somebody else did and eventually it all fell down and so they just left her under a tree to see if God would do something and we came. 
and uh, amazing that she hadn't been eaten by dogs or bitten by a snake or eaten by ants even because sitting on the ground the ants could eat you. Um, so she came in here, she didn't know how to eat, she diarrheaed or vomited everything we gave her. So you had to give her tiny, tiny amounts, very, very soft food, uh, very frequently. Um, and we had to watch her that she didn't crush or break her bones by her own weight. And uh, now she is our little four-year-old, as bright as a button and can speak English and society perfectly fluently. And her name is Jadida, which means God's darling. The Swaziland Nazarene Health Institution has 17 clinics spread across the country. These clinics, supported and equipped by NCMI, reach HIV AIDS victims in remote areas of Swaziland. The clinics also offer a base to train local citizens about the disease, to overcome the stigmas, and to promote prevention. Raleigh Fitkin Memorial Hospital is at the center of the SNHI structure. Based in the capital of Manzini, this hospital trains nurses for the clinics, delivers 200 babies a day, and is the source for distribution of HIV AIDS resources to the country. NCMI is advancing a countrywide strategy that mobilizes the strengths and assets of the people of Swaziland beginning with the hospital, and then strengthening the clinics and training faith and community-based organizations. There is hope, however the need is still great. It is your help that changes the life of a woman like Pumzili, that teaches people prevention and removes stigmas. And it is your help that brings resources and equipment to the healthcare institutions of Swaziland. AIDS has a tight grip on Swaziland, but slowly, with your support, NCMI is able to stem the tide of this powerful killer. <laughs>